So, hello everybody. Welcome to the Ragit webinar on April 14th or 15th, depending on which time zone and the location where you are. And at the meantime, I've started a little bit early and I'll just wait for a few more minutes to allow more users and people who use Ragic to join or anyone who's interested in Ragic basically. So in the meantime, if you have any questions during, during the webinar, you can simply type in your question in the comment section located on the right of the screen. If you're using a computer to watch this webinar, or if you're using a phone or any tablet device on your YouTube app, it is, it is located below the screen. So basically just type in your questions or anything you would like to ask me, and I'll try to answer it during the webinar and perform a live demonstration as possible. All right, I think we can get this webinar started right now. So hello, everybody. My name is Fabio Kuo, and I hope everybody is doing fine, especially with the pandemic going on in various places. Hope you guys are all safe at home and hope we'll, hope we'll be living our normal lives in the near future. So in the meantime, I'm going to give you a webinar a demonstration of how to use Ragic and how to show you the basic database tools that you might need for your database. So just to, to, just to give you a brief information, as you may already know, Ragic is a DIY database tool that allows you to design your own database regarding your needs and your workflows for your company. And simply by, by starting at Ragic, you can simply just sign up here, sign on the homepage to sign up, type in your name or database, your full name, your email, and password, and then you can simply sign up for free. Now, after you have done that, you can, there will be, you'll go to this page, which is your, the home page of your database when you just started it. So you can create a new sheet. You need a lot of sheets in your database to make it work since our database is organized by the fields and sheets and building sheet relationships. So I'm going to teach you how to do them. So let's add a new sheet right now. So I'm going to add, add a new sheet from here, or you can, Add it from up here when you when you have tabs in the future. Now, first of all, I need to create a new tab. Today, I'm going to do a sports equipment sales order. So I'm going to just type in sports sales order and design a new sheet. Now, the first sheet I would need to design is called the product sheet. Now, this sheet will be recording for all the products that you need in your database. So, the product sheet and then create. Now it will guide you to this whole, whole blank page. Now you can start creating your new field, which basically you may already know. Um, 
the sheets that are designed by recording, uh, designing fields for your data to be recorded. So let's do that now. Let's design a new new field. So what do you need? A product sheet. I first need a product ID. Wait a moment, please. I first need a product ID. And a product name for it. Sorry, there was some technological issues. Now everything is fine right now. So our product name, product name, uh, unit price. Mm, category and color. I'm just gonna use these five fields for now. And as you can see, there are we have a lot of different field types. Well, some of them are defined direct directly when you enter the field name, since it will try to guess which field type it will be used. It, it will be good to use for. So a product ID will be a free text free text and then unit price will be a money field and when I say category there's a selection. So let's say free let's say what, what field types we have. We have free text selection, checkbox, date, and a lot of different field types you'll use. So I'm gonna use these five for now. And then a simple place for you to record your product product are done. So and you click on save. Now this sheet is completed. Now what you need to do is to enter enter your data here. So I'm gonna first of all enter the product name. So let's say uh, basketball. Y unit price, let's say it's thirty dollars. And color red. Now as you can see this is a selection field. I haven't there's no match option since I I forgot to enter the selections there. Now you can save this record, but then whenever you need to make changes, just go back to the design mode to make changes. Now, as you can see, this ID, I also need to change it to a ID that will be better to use. So I, I will change it to an auto-generate field where you can simply generate your, it will be automatically generate your own ID. And this will be, a, this will be on a sequence that you have selected and you can format the sequence here. So this is from zero to, well, five digit, five digits. So I'm gonna change the formatting by product dash, and then you'll have the product code here. The cate category. I'll try. I'll add in equipment, fashion. Hmm. Let's see what categories are good. And I just simply just write it other. So there are three selections here, which I can then use for the for the product sheet. And this is I already have the data there. I would need to populate eight empty values. So that first record I just recorded, the basketball record, will have the empty values there. So now save and I'll go back. See now you have see the product code is here since I just populated empty value and this. I can select a category, which is called equipment. Now, right now I'm gonna add a few more of them. So this more looks like a product database. Product two.
All right, just, I have just recorded six new products. And as you can see, I just did, other than adding, I, you can add new records by clicking on the new button here, or you can go to the, what we call the listing page. And the listing page, you can add it from the quick add here. So this, this is how you may add your records here. So in case if you're wondering what is the difference between a listing page and a form page, so this is the listing page. The listing page shows some, some details of all your data. So you can, I mean, you can select to select to view, view less of them. So by changing the design and select which fields that you don't want to be shown on the listing page with the field picker. But I feel like since we don't have a lot many, that many fields and it should be all fit in the page. So I said, let's just show all five fields. And the form page is which, which I was just entering my data in. So when you click inside, now this is called the form page. And then now we have a simple product sheet completed. And the next sheet I'm going to do is a customer's data page. Now, other than just simply go to the tab and I create a new sheet, I'm going to do this differently. So I'm going to go to my Excel and I'm gonna create my new customer data from here. So, you, yes. What I'm gonna do right now is to import my data from Excel to create a new sheet in Radjik. So, what fields I would need in the customer sheet, first of all, is the customer name. Customer name, uh, I'm just gonna add in region. Age, I guess. Age should be cool. Phone number, email, address. So I'm going to just use these six fields for now, and now I'm going to create a, a list of data in Excel first. So customer name, region. All right, and right now these phone numbers, emails, and addresses, I'm just trying to make it up with my own brain so these won't be really correct in, in accordance to a specific country or a specific place, so just for your information.
So now after I finish creating an Excel form, I, I, I might, it might be faster to start with a data set ready to go this time, but now I kind of just wanted to show you the, the creation of everything. So I just did a, decided to start a small one from scratch. So if, it might be a little bit time consuming, but I guess you can see how it will work. So after I press save, now you can go here and then create a new sheet. Yes, you still have to create a new sheet, but then you can create a new sheet with my Excel file. So sheet name, um, customer's sheet. And then you can choose your file here, which is in, I think on desktop two. And then now you can upload your, upload it. Now, as the first row, if you're, if the first row is the basic, basically the headers, it will be the it will be the the field the field name for it, and then it will only get the field name for it, and the uh, the remaining data beneath it will be the values. So after this, it confirmed. You can click next, and then now I want to create a new one in in the product sheet. So in the product sheet tab, which I think I should change it to a sales order tab. I'll change it later and let's go next. And now it will be, it will, it will try to guess the fields that you're trying to use, but sometimes it won't be correctly. So in the name field, I want to be a free text. Um, region, I want to be a selection since I'm trying to select regions from different, from different places. Age, I want to be numeric. Phone number, I want to be a phone field, of course, and email, it'll be an email field too. So after that, I'll click on next and then import and create. Now your sheet, your sheet is then created here. Now you can see all the, all your data is then imported here and then now your new sheet is created. Now this is the listing page. Now let's see what it is in the form page. So yes, you have all the data here and, and what you might like. And now simply your customer's sheet is then completed. And now, now the main task today is to create a sales order. And before that, let me change the name of the tab. Well, I should, you can click on this uh, downward button and then click on rename. So I want to rename it to a sales order. Whoops, so many typos today. So now this tab is now renamed to a sales order. And under that, I want to create a new sheet. Now this one, is called the, the sales order tab. The sales order sheet, I'm sorry. All right, now in the sales order sheet, I want to record which customers have bought which products on a certain date. So first of all, I need to get the, the customer's data linked and loaded in. Rather than copying and pasting from elsewhere, I want to do this by link and load. So go to form tools and link and load from the customer's sheet. Um, First of all, the linked field, I want to use the customer name since this, this linked field usually has to be a unique field. And generally, in most cases, if you record the full names of customers, they should be all in unique values. So I'm just going to use customer names. However, if you worry that if customer names are not in unique values, you can, you can simply create a new field such as the customer ID field that is all generated and each customer has their own unique ID. I'm going to use the customer name field for now and then link and load the, to, the, to the, the sales order sheet. And I'll just get, get a note down some of, their, some of their data. So and then after this is completed, exit link manager, there's are four new fields. This, is, this will be later executed in the sales order by using link and load. And other than that, I want, I want to also create a subtable to see what products they have bought in a certain order. And regarding this order, so that's at the subtable fields for now. So product, unit price, quantity, subtotal. I'll press on save for now. And then this time, I'm also going to use link and load from the products sheet. Form tools, link and load again. 
Um, I missed a field called the product ID since I want to, I wanted to have a product ID with this, so I'll just add a new field here. ID, and then I'll just I can simply just drag and move your fields anywhere on the subtables or on the field on the main sheet. So now link and load starts. Unit price. So if I select the product ID, it will automatically populate this the product name and the unit price for it. I'm just checking if all all fields are in the right format. Yes, in the right format. However, the subtotal I want it automatically calculated. So click on the field and then go to formula. So what will be the sub what will be the subtotal for it? It will be the unit price times the quantity. So it will be. You get the field headers for you get the field headers C9 times D9. And apply this and this formula will then apply it on this field. And then if you want to calculate the total of all your subtable records, um, you can simply just create a new field here. So if I for example, if I want to calculate the grand total, I want grand total, which is the total of all subtables. Again, go to formulas. And just type in E9. And of course, I mean, to this be all the products unit price times the, all the pro all the quantities, I could also do C9 times E9 on, on this field for the formula as well. And I'm gonna add uh, one field that I also need to add is the date of purchase. Date of order should be a better name actually. So yes, and automatically shows the the date for it. And then again, let's save. Now let's leave. Let's see what it's like in the form page first. So this is a, a a whole completely new form page. Now we can start the new sales order. So customer name. I'm gonna grab the first one, Henry O'Neill. As you can see, I selected Henry O'Neill. It populated his phone number, email, and an address. I still have to manually select the day. So you can you can either enter it by by typing in numbers, or you can simply click on the calendar. So I'm just gonna say order on the state, and then now you can select more products. What products do you buy? So soccer shoes for, and then you have to enter the quantity. So two. Now as you can see, these are all calculated automatically. Basketball. Basketball shorts. Okay, the three. And after pressing save, after pressing save, basically your data, your one sales order is just simply done. And this for the first time for a trial, you might find a lot some errors you have made in your in your sheets, such as for this one, I missed out the dollar sign for the grand total, so I can go back and change this to the money field. Well, in the money field, it automatically adds a new a dollar sign in front of it. And if you have if you if you have different valid currency signs, you can also change the formatting. For example, if you have a, a British pounds or European euros or Chinese yen, like different signs you would like to use, you can just simply change the format here, and it will be it will also be on on right there. So again, press save. Now record has been saved. Yes, the dollar sign comes up, comes up now. Now, as you can see, I just imported a data into the customer sheet. I can also export it here. So go to tools when you on your on your form page. You can, and then you can there's there's a lot of ways to do it. And again, first of all, you can download as an Excel file. And then it will automatically download this file as an Excel file in a pre-designed template that we in a like a rapid design template and let's see what it looks like. So this will be how it looks like. It when it downloads to Excel, or you can also download it as a PDF. Again, there's some selections you can do, so I'm just gonna say download. So let's see what it looks like on the PDF. And this is the PDF version of your sales order. 
Now, one last thing that makes your database extremely customizable is by using a function called the mail merge. Now, what is, what is mail merge is basically allowing you to, popul to export your data in a pre-designed format of your own choice in Word or Excel. So how do you do it? First of all, you click on mail merge here. Now you can, you can upload a template, but let me just show you how to, what is a sample, what the template should look like by downloading a sample template. So this is a, the sample template of this product sheet. I mean, not this product sheet of the sales order. So this is the sample template that we have, we have provided and then it will only list out the, the field headers and basic and basically you see this part the uh, basically this part it is where you fill fill in the 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 values of the field values you're in, you're in and other than using the field names you can also fill in the field ids which you can find in your in the design mode field id since each field will have it, its own unique field id it will be more accurate sometimes in case you have many fields with the same name, but for this case, since all the fields have different names, so we can just go with the names. So let's save this. And then mail merge, you can create a template and then choose file. Get to the downloads. And then after it's uploaded, you can select to mail merge it as Word or Excel. And now it will automatically populate the data here and then and simply you can design your own template as you wish. And then other, other than just like importing and exporting, if you need to have more processes, regarding in your company, such as you need an approval process, you can also use in a graduate for any sheet as well. So how do you do the approval process? Simply again, go to the design mode. And then right in the bottom right corner, this person with a checkbox, you can configure an approval form flow for this form. And you can add as many steps as you wish. So add approval step. You, you can select anyone or base, or different user groups, different users, or even a specific field. For example, like you want the email field, the, the value of the email field to receive this piece of data and, and show its approval. And other than that, you can also add advanced rules, um, advanced settings, in, like such as locking when approval starts, allowing rejection, etc. And for each step, you can add additional rules, such as add approvers in a simple single step, set, set rules, for example, like if, if customer name, this like a special guy is checked, like Leonardo Lumias is checked. And then if this is checked, then this approval field will appro uh, appear, something like that. And that's basically how you manage your approval flows. And then with that, your supervisors or anyone related will be able to approve their, your, this sheet before you proceed to the next step. Now, let's save this sheet for now. And I'm, I'm gonna create a few, a few more sales orders sales order sales sales orders for different users and then i'm going to show you a, a new another function in the customer sheet which is called the reference subtable so give me a few more minutes to create new uh new records please thank you
In the meantime, if you have any questions regarding uh, how to use Radric or specific tools that you might want to use, you can feel free to ask me now and I'll find, I'll find a way to uh, give you guys a demonstration as well. All right, I just created a few sales orders. And then right now, I'm gonna create a reference subtable in the customer sheet to see what orders and all the orders each, each of the customers have done. So let's go back to the customer's sheet. Again, go to the change design, the design mode. And in form tools, there's a, other than link and load, you can also show references from existing sheets. So I'm gonna link to this sheet, uh, the sales order. Now there's, they say a, this shows you a linked subtable. Now linked subtable, you can drag it down here. It says this sheet is this sheet is linked to the sales order sheet by the customer name. So it, on the subtables here, it will populate all the date, the de the details of the orders in in the subtables in right here. So it will show you the the date of order. You can you can simply select the, the fields you would like to show. So, for example, like the date of the date of order and the grand total. I think that will be. I think that will be enough since we already have the the phone number, emails, and addresses. So I'm just gonna delete these three fields and just leave the date of order and grand total. So now let's go back. Now, Henry O'Neill has one order, as you can see, Henry O'Neill has one order with a grand total of, of 518. And I, th I made three orders for, for Mr. Leonardo Nunez, which is three orders with three orders with three different grand totals. Now, I could also, again, using formulas to calculate how much he has, he has spent in our company. So, again, change design. And I'll say total of all orders. And this also has to be in a money field as well as the grand total field, which I missed out on changing. So the total of all orders, the formula would be B10. And just for your information, a Radric is unlike Excel, you don't need to start with an equal sign. So B10. And generally, in case in case I would like whenever I create a new formula on a pre-designed sheet, I will always click on apply all formulas on this sheet to all save records, so you'll automatically have all the records with the formula you need. So, how do we link sheets with logic that can be based on fields in either sheets? Um, would you please elaborate more on this question? So. I'll be able to give you a better, I'll be able to understand it better and then provide you with an explanation or the demonstration, please. Thank you very much. CHC group, thanks for the comment. And yes, now I just so I just show you the total of all, all orders here. And then now I'm on the other hand, you can also create a you can Create a subtable from a pre-designed form, from a, basically a form. However, you can also create a, on the new form. You can also create a new form from a subtable, which is completely the opposite. The opposite way of doing this. So I'm going to go back to the sales order sheet and change its design. Now I just want to have a whole list of all the like all the purchases bought in terms of each product bought. So I'm gonna create a new sheet from this subtable. New sheet from subtable, and then this sheet will link back to this form by selecting um, these three fields. I don't think they're they're good they're they're good enough for the 
for linking back to the sheet. So I'm going to add a new field called the sales order number. Sales order number. And I want this field also to be auto generated, just like what I've done for the products, for the products ID. And then for the formatting, SO and the number. And after I save this, I want to populate empty values. So, and then after that, I will also create a new sheet on subtable, link it back, and it will link it back to the sales order number, and create a new sheet. It will automatically create a new sheet for you, and then you'll see all the all the purchases made in regards to each each product. So I can go in and then change the design. And now we, we have selected the subtable field and the link field, which is the product ID. And other than that, you can also link fields from parent sheet to add more fields in this sheet. Though, since this is linked to the sales order, you can also add the fields like the customer name. Uh, I, was, I would also like to add the grand total of it. I think that would be cool and then save. Oops. So you can save this. And then now you'll have all the data, you have all the data regarding basically of all the orders and all the products in all sales orders. So I'm gonna ask a few, a few questions that you guys have now. So. List the basic CTHC group mentioned a list of persons are in an organ in an organization to so selected by fields in either table that like attend attendance list for persons that attended an event on a given date. Let me let me think about this first. Well basically like I think it basically it really depends on how your database logic could with in, in terms of the customers or people that you're trying to process is using. It will be it will be depending on depending on how you simply design your own sheets and basically how you use your LinkedIn load to to select your your people and then pop, populate the related events. So Trash Look, you asked, is there a way to organize customer-based data to identify customer who has made the first purchase, customer who hasn't made any purchase but on your customers list, and three other customers? Well, you can. there's a lot more different functions. Let me go back to the customers page again. So, for example, or... So if you want to organize customer data, customer who has made the first purchase. So I'm not really sure what you mean by first purchase. So I would I'm just gonna say I'm just I'm just gonna say that customers who have like how many purchases this customer has made. So purchases have made, purchases made, and this will also be a number. And for a formula, for a formula, since I'm going to see all the purchases are made on and are all recorded in the subtable, and this formula will be just simply to count how many subtable entries are there. So count a ten. So that will count the amount of purchases made in in the, for each customer. Yeah, you know, again, save this database, and I, I should save it before I apply the formulas, actually. And you can, open, um, if you want to see that customers who have made no purchases, you can also, for example, you can also say that like, use a conditional formatting. Uh, I would, I would actually should do it on the on the listing page first, since it, since that will give you the first class of it. So purchases made. I'll get this. 
this field in the listing page and then add a, a tool called conditional formatting. So new rule, if purchases made is equal, it's equal or any, you can use less than or it's greater than, but I'm just gonna use equal is equal to zero. Uh, you can show message, no purchases made, made and in and you can add more different rules as well. I'll just do that rule again. So I just click the wrong. If purchase is made is equal to zero. Show show message. And I also want to change and I want to change the color. So set the value the value color of the whole row to red to this sort of light pink itch color and again save Let's see if this works so yes this one will be pink and this one will be shown to pink and yes so no purchase is made now let's go back to the sales the basically and then there's also one function that made that is important for many people is called the access rights. So in Radric, access rights are controlled by each sheet and it will you assign different users to view the sheet or not. And if you want to have users to view to view the your diff, the sheets differently, such as uh, different fields, you know, see, allow them to see different fields, allow them to have access or have action on different fields. Now this is called, this is done by multiple versions. So I'm gonna show you how to do multiple versions on this customer's sheet. So change design. So go to form tools again, go to multiple versions. Now, what is multiple versions? It is basically two or more different sheets that uses the same data source. So when you add data on one sheet or make edits on one sheet, it will also populate on the, uh, on the other sheet in the respective fields, if there's those fields. So duplicate sheet with the same data source of the new sheet. Customer sheet copy one. Why did it pop up? Love. Allow pop. Uh, always allow pop up. This is. Or right, let me try it again. Actually, I can just simply go to that sheet already, I guess. Customer sheet copy one. Oh, I'm not sure what happened with the pop the pop up blocking, but my my multiple versions is completed. Now, if for example, if you want this sheet to be shown to, I say some of your management employees, but you don't want to show them all the data, such as you don't want them to to know their phone number, know their addresses, and know their orders. Well, you can simply hide those fields here. And just hide every like hide the fields that you don't you wish you don't wish them to see, and of course you can also you can also say that they shouldn't be able to to man to do any edits on the sheet. So for other fields they can view, you can also select that as read only. And to manage your access rights on this specific sheet, you can go to form settings. And then as you can see, there's a lot of different user groups. So you can assign different user groups with different access rights. So I say if it's a user, you can only be a bulletin user where you can view, view all the records, but only edit your own. You can be a survey or survey user, create and edit your own entry. You can only be a viewer. Or you can simply, if you have, if you should have all the access, even including the the the, the edit of all entries, you can be the admin of it as well. Now there are different user groups. So if you have a lot of different users in your database, but you would like to have each user to have the different access rights, you can you simply have to first assign your users into different user groups. And I'll show you that after we. I'll show you that how to uh, assign them to different user groups after. Uh, basically in the next step. So again, save. 
and then basically what whatever you have edited on the custom like the main, the customer sheet which is the other multiple versions that you're able to edit it will automatically populate on here even if i make an edit to this record for example i say harry o'neill for this for this record i want to change i want to change his region so if he's from north america he's he's only 0.5 on this record, he will, the, it will automatically be updated here. And now, this was the previous version of how you switch between sheets, but now on the left side, you can simply just click this on this button, the two sheets and then with the two arrows going opposite ways. This means a, a multiple, one multiple versions of this sheet. And click on it, and then you're gonna go to these other multiple versions sheet. So this will be shown convenience, but, and of course, if you don't have the access rights to this sheet, you won't be able to see this button here. And now, finally, the last thing I want to do on this customer sheet is called fil filtering and sorting. So in the listing page or in subtables, you can select to sort sort or filter how many, like, like all your records. So first of all, like if, for example, you want to sort by age, so sort from largest to smallest, click on the, click on the, button, the downward button here, and then you can select to sort here. And if you want to filter it, for example, I only want um, I only want customers called Henry on to be shown here. So filter by text, Henry. And I'll only filter out. Filter out and then with the sort. However, there's only one there's only one record, so the sort won't be won't be really essential here. And after you have done that, you can save this as a view in three different ways. So on below this below the search button after you have completed your filter you can select the save as view so there will be three different kinds of views you can have a personal view which is this filter this view is for yourself personally shared view is a is a view that will be shared between the colleagues or anyone who have access to this sheet in the database and fixed filter is basically a pre-designed filter to have and sort to have this automatically populated in that in that sorted rule so i'm just going to make this a personal view and i'm just going to call it henry view submit so now I, you can see there's a button here and if i clear all the filters and then click on this henry view it will automatically present it with the the view i have selected and now finally how would you manage your users in your database now that will be in the system so she's when you go to start here and then account setup so first of all you have you'll see a, like i have four different users which are either myself or simply the support the support staff will have access to my account for, for support purposes and you can you can and then that'll be you can manage your users on this sheet and other than that you can also manage your groups so these are the groups that these are the groups are that are used in your sheets these are all default groups and you can always click on new to create a new group just like how you create a new entry and that's and basically yes that is how you assign the groups here and each user when you, let's go back to the user sheet each user you can assign them in different groups right here so Basically, uh, you're a sysadmin management or accounting. So if one of my sheets only allows the accounting to have to view or edit that sheet, basically only sysadmins and account and accounting staff will be able to uh, modify, make changes or create records, or whatever access rights you have on that sheet. And also, other than going to each sheet, you can also manage access rights down here. So I have five sheets. So right now every user is a bulletin user, but I don't want that to do it. I don't want that to happen. So every, not all users can have bulletin users all rights. So that's, I would want to say the product sheets only, only the accounting has, can be a survey user and customer sheets, they can only be a viewer. And you can simply just just arrange it from this grid and then, and then click save to have your access rights to work. This will come in really handy when you have 
a lot of users in a lot of different groups in your database, such as when you have, when you're basically using this database for really, really large company consisting of hundreds, hundreds or even thousands of people. And your database can be, the access rights of your database can be all controlled by yourself. So that is basically all the tools that, basic tools that you might need. So that's, I would just give you guys a general review on this. Well, first of all, you can just simply create a new sheet by clicking, clicking on the plus button up here. And then if you want to create a new tab, it is on the plus button in the add a new sheet button. And then you can create a new sheet by adding new fields. You can also create a new sheet with an Excel file. So basically we have a list of Excel data and, and basically you just simply upload, upload it to Ratchet. And then it will all add create a new sheet for you. So you don't really have to create a new sheet and then import your data. That will be, you can, you can complete it by one step rather than two. And we have also done this for sub tables and then exporting with mail merge or simply export into an Excel or a PDF format. And there goes out a brief understanding of how to configure approvals and two different sub tables, which are, I think, I kind of believe that they're an opposite logic, which is a reference subtable to get all the all the data that this sheet was linked to, and also uh, create just simply create a new sheet from the subtable to to make all your subtable entries into one one individual entry itself. And also we have also done using formulas and make sure that you don't use the equal button to start with, since in Ragic you don't need that. And, multi and using access rights with multiple versions and user magic set settings for simply for every sheet. Now remember that in Raja, each sheet and almost each field, if you create enough, if you create enough uh, multiple versions, you can simply have access, use different access rights for them. So, yeah. so I would say that it is really comprehensive for for a company in any sizes and in any fields you can simply design your database in the process of your company and basically how you wish it would be so right now reaching almost reaching the conclusion of this webinar if you have any questions i'll leave some time for you guys to ask some more questions and and i'll answer it right now And just a reminder, if you would like to ask some questions, just simply type in the chat box, which is located on the right of your screen or on the bottom of your, of your tab, tablet device in the app. So you would like to migrate a membership application from Microsoft Access to Radric, and I would, um, I would say that I think we will need to go into deeper discussion by email and I'll teach I'll, I think if you would like to send us an email about how you, what you wish your database would like and what you're, how you're using on Microsoft Access, feel free to send us an email at support, S-U-P-P-R-I-T at ragic.com. So we'll have more information from you to understand what, what you'll need and then we'll provide you database suggestions. And on the other hand, you also have more details and we'll provide you more documents regarding it. The email is support at ragic.com. Support is just simply the support, supporting, support the word, S U P P O R T at ragic, R A G I C dot com. And can this tool be used to cohort an analysis of your customer's activity rate? Um, this, I think we need more information on what you would like to do in your databases. We we'll, we need to know what what kind of activity rate is that, and how you would like to record 
each activity. So, so user trash lucky. If you would like to, you, can, you may also send us an email at support at ragjet.com so we have a better understanding of your database and then assist you with the best of your needs. And for your information, if you have just uh, created a database in Rajek, but you're still a bit lost when, when this beginning, uh, one thing you can do is to click on the Learn Rajek located on the top, near top right of the screen and click on it. And then there, there's, a lot of different there's a lot of different tools that may help you, such as the videos. We have a lot of um, some videos that you can do. Uh, interactive tutorials which guides you to the guides you to simply like the, the simple designs of your database such as installing using new templates create a simple form subtables and a new sheet from subtable and there's also some documents which these documents especially the guide for creating database for admins I'll click on it here and for, for users these two these two documents simply describes all the tools and all the usages your graduate needs so it is it is really handy to refer refer to them often whenever you get lost on the on the tool or a specific function but even i need, i use it frequently too and for the end users that is simply the user part and for the for the designers it is the the, the, the form design part so yes and if you're using your database and you occur you use Need yeah any questions such as you've experienced some something that you think is not right or you have simply general questions when you're using your database or designing a database um, the re the really top right corner the need help button click on it and then you can create a support ticket from here you can write well while writing a support ticket simply I would it will be extremely helpful for us if and also for you as well if you are as detailed as possible so if you write in all the details with your with your issues such as what's happening um what is supposed to be what she and what link it's on and even for us to give a clear clear view you can also provide us with a screenshot or even a screen recording since i always say a picture says a thousand words and a video sometimes accumulates to a thousand pictures so these will really help us massively and after you have you have finished writing it with all the files uploaded you can submit to grant project support to access your account by doing that we'll receive your email with your issue and then you have granted us to access your account and then then simply we'll find the issues from our side and if you're worried about about like the the access rights of the project support you can feel free to change it to to no rights if after we have finished our support and then and then you won't have any issues with access settings so i'll be here for another two or three more minutes if you guys have any final questions and sim simply regarding the project database and or simply how you would like to use project database and i'll I'll simply provide answers right now. And also one final question for you guys. Uh, this is out of my personal curiosity. Is that I'm really wondering where are all, where are you guys are watching this from? Or from what country? From what country and what region? I'm personally in Taiwan right now. So, but I think all our customers are mostly in, in different countries around the world. So I would like to have a general understanding of the demographic. If you guys would like to share.
Thanks for the information from user Trash Lucky and CCHC group. Well, well, this shows that we have a group. We have uh, at least a group of members watching us from, uh, from Asia, which is probably in the morning right now, and uh, in the Americas, which is I think it should be at nighttime too there as well. So yeah, there's a lot of difference in how the demographic wise and even in time wise. So if you guys don't have any other questions, I will. I will be ending this the stream, and I hope you guys are all safe, especially with the current status and the conditions of the pandemic. And hope you guys are all safe. And and thank you, thank you for watching the webinar today. Thank you very much.